Auntie Linda and Big Gibbs and Richards, which are the best. Professor um, Dr. Otto is ready to share his screen, so he will start playing some video for us. Okay, well, thank you, Marcella, and uh, thank you all for having me. Um, I am Ruben Addo. I am an assistant professor in the social work uh, department, and so professor. Sorry, uh, do you want to still do the intro video, or do we keep uh, uh, go directly yeah, to the presentation? Yes, I, I will do it later. Okay. Yeah, In that case, you. let me let me start. Let me start and then you could go. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you everyone to um come into coffee hour this Tuesday. I, as you know, this week is diversity awareness week at Fresno State. So we're highlighting um Ghana today in this diversity week. Um, so I'm going to put the link in a little bit in the chat box for you to see, check the rest of the events for the rest of the week. Um, you will see there the study abroad student panel that is happening later this evening at 6 p.m. So if you are a student and have questions about how to study abroad in Ghana, which we do have programs in Ghana, and you will see the links there. Um, you could join us and there is going to be a alum that is going to be just answering questions that you may have uh, for students. So with further ado, since uh, Professor Otto is ready to start the presentation, um, um, we're very happy that he is with us. He actually was a uh, highlight and give kudos in the campus news. I don't know if you noticed um, that he was highlighted in the campus news for his new article, Developing Culture and Humility in the International social work classroom. So we cannot have a better speaker today to celebrate diversity week at Fresno State. So I would further ado, I will let him um, start talking about his country, but also what the things that he does in Fresno State. So okay. now you're, the mic is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you, Marcel, and thank you for your patience and um, you know organizing these events and also all the people involved in uh, in this International Coffee Hour. Uh, my name is Ruben Adul. This is my second semester here at Fresno State, and uh, I'm happy to to be at Fresno State. Uh, you know, I've had you know incredible, uh, wonderful discussions with students in the classroom, and uh, I'm really excited uh, to be here at Fresno State. I'm in the social work uh, department. Uh, my research um, focuses on social relationships uh, within the homeless uh, community. And then I also look at uh, international 
social work education? How do we look at culturally appropriate uh, education uh, for social workers um, and even other professionals who are looking into uh, uh, working in, in other countries uh, to really look at uh, more of a critical look about how we engage in international uh, uh, community, international practice. And because in, in, in the past, how we have looked at international development have not benefited indigenous communities. So uh, to take more of a critical uh, look at, uh, especially the, the work of these big uh, nonprofit organizations that go into communities, um, uh, you know, in all over the world to take more of a critical look at, at what they do. So thank you, thank you very much uh, for having me. Um, so um, this is, um, you know, uh, when you, I was asked to talk about Ghana, uh, my culture, uh, uh, it's uh, because Ghana has so much diversity um, in, uh, in, in, in Ghana. Um, uh, Ghana is a country located in West Africa, and Ghana is, um, you know, in, within the Sub-Saharan uh, Africa, was the first country in Sub-Saharan Africa to gain, uh, you know, independ independence from colonial rule. Um, so Ghana was colonized by the British, so it was a, uh, a former uh, British British colony, right? So currently the population is around 32 uh, million people. The Ghana has a lot of resources, uh, natural resources, gold, timber, diamonds, bauxite, cocoa. Ghana is the second largest producer of cocoa. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say a little bit of, about this because you know these resources, um, the gold especially, more, more recently gold, uh, has been a big, um, there's you know, currently a, like a gold boom going on in Ghana, but that has caused a lot of distraction to the to environment and even impacting the uh, cocoa production because a lot of uh, some of the farms that have been passed on from generation to generation are being destroyed because of mining. Uh, because people, you know, go into these uh, areas because cocoa is grown in the forest areas, uh, and so they go in and you know uh, dig these uh, mine uh, gold in these places and uh, destroy the natural uh, environment. Uh, so this is a big issue that is going currently going on uh, as gold prices go up. It has an impact on some of these communities and more and more people want to get rich. So they, um, it, you know, they don't care about the environment sometimes. So th those are some of those uh, current uh, issues with na natural resources. Again, also, you know, you've in Ghana, um, uh, the forest areas, there's a lot of agriculture, but mostly cocoa, uh, which the farmers do not, benefit much uh, because the, when you look at the chocolate industry, uh, the, the, the people who are benefiting mostly are the, you know, the uh, multinational co uh, corporations, but the, the government has tried to uh, increase the, uh, how much it, the, the government pays the cocoa farmers, uh, but that depends on how much the, the, the government world market also. Uh, uh, now they've been efforts to uh, pay the, the cocoa farmers what they call living wages, right? So that um, they can have a better life than what they they currently have. Uh, so if I, um, I think Ghana uh, is on the West African coast. Uh, we have there is Togo to the east, Ivory Coast on the west, and then the northern part is the uh, is uh, Burkina Faso. Ghana used to be called the Gold Coast uh, because of uh, uh, the, the abundance of gold. And so they it used to be called Gold Coast. It changed into, uh, re, it was named, renamed Ghana after the, its independence in 1957. So Ghana, there's you know, several languages in Ghana. These are just uh, a few of them. Uh, the, you know, there was, you know, the Ashanti, uh, 
uh, the Airways, Fanti, uh, several languages, and then also religion. Uh, Christianity is the majority religion. Uh, the uh, Christianity, uh, there's also the Muslim uh, religion, which is about 17%. Some people dispute that because they think they uh, the more Muslims than what the censors uh, reveal. And then there's also this uh, traditional uh, religious beliefs. And then there are other uh, ones also. But all of this, what is interesting is that all of the, even Christianity um, in uh, Christian practices in Ghana are mixed with some uh, African traditional uh, beliefs sometimes. So uh, although most of the people may um, you know, uh, practice Christianity, but it's also mixed with some traditional practices. Um, because if you've uh, if you've been to uh, the, uh, the Catholic Church in, for example, in Ghana, uh, how they do their worship versus uh, uh, a Catholic Church in I, someone invited me to a Catholic Church in in Maine, <laughs> Maine, Portland, Maine, and. Uh, how they did their practices is very different from the Catholic Church in Ghana. There's a lot of uh, introduction of African drums um, in, in the churches. So you see that, uh, that although they identify as you know, Christian, it's a lot of it is mixed with some aspect of African uh, culture and how they worship. Um, so these are the, the major groups in Ghana. I'll talk a little bit about the Akans uh, because the Akan is the, the majority ethnic group in Ghana, which is about 47% uh, of the population. But apart from that, uh, um, I, I will say more than 60% of the population can speak the Akan uh, dialect. Uh, so, or the Akan language. Um, so the Akans are the majority in, in Ghana, um, almost 50%, but other groups also can speak the Akan, Akan language. Uh, so the, the, all these different groups uh, within the, the, uh, the, the Akan ethnic group, uh, several different dialects that are spoken uh, in, in Akan, but they, they are all intelligible, you know, they can understand each other. The Akans are a uh, matrilineal society, right? That they trace their lineage through their, uh, their mother's side, right? So I'm an Akan, uh, you know, in, in Western societies where they may say, well, I was born here, so I'm from here. In Akan culture, it's not where you were born. That's where you identify with. It's where your mother comes from. That's how you identify with, right? So you could be born in, you know, in America or wherever you're born, but where your mother comes from, that's how you identify with, you know? So um, in even your father identifies with his mother <laughs> and then you also identify uh, with your mother. Uh, there's this believe in, in a can that the, the mother gives the blood of the child, the father gives the spirit of the child. And, you know, and so the child is connected to that, uh, to, to, to the mother's um, um, identify with, with the mother. Um, so the, that's how a can society is, is, is structured. Uh, so in, in every Akan, um, um, society, there is, you know, there's what we call the chief, the, the traditional chief in, in every Akan uh, society. And the, the position of the chief um, is based on heredity, right? Um, with Akans, you know, uh, they selected from the uh, the chief is selected from the royal family in every every town or every village has a, a chief. Um, every city has a chief, you know, within a Khan society. So it starts as a kind of a hierarchy. We have a smaller chief, we have bigger chiefs, and then we have, you know, you know uh, like uh, other groups will have like a king, um, right? 
So every village will have a chief and that chief is selected from the royal family within that village, right? And the chief is selected because the chief's mother comes from the royal family. Uh, so, um, you know, but the chief's, the chief's son can never become a chief. Uh, you know, the chief's son can never become the chief, but the chief's uh, sister's children, nephews, uh, the chief's nephews can become chief, but the chief's children can never become uh, a chief, right? So everyone who is connected uh, with the, uh, the maternal lineage uh, could become a chief uh, in, in these villages or towns. So within these, um, uh, with uh, a traditional chief, chief has a lot of authority uh, you know, with time, with uh, post-independence era, the role of these chiefs have, um, uh, have re you know, the, the traditional authority has gone down a little bit because of uh, political uh, 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 structures that, you know, with independence and with uh, the uh, uh, westernization or western democracy, um, the uh, we have more of a political authority, but the chiefs are still play significant roles in you know the traditional setting. Um, so the chief is responsible for maintaining good order in the community, uh, matters that are affecting uh, the welfare of the people. Um, uh, there are uh, there are other persons within the chief. The chief. You know, in a Western sense, they think you, they look at an African chief, you know, that can chief and think the chief has absolute authority. But in a can sense, the chief uh, does not have all the authority. The chief sits in the council of other elders, right? And then one other person within the account uh, society that is of importance is the queen mother. Um, the queen mother um, is like the, what we call the, uh, the, the welfare, uh, you know, it's like the social welfare officer in the community. Uh, she uh, she has a lot of influence um, uh, in um, you know in in the community uh, because you, to to even select a chief, uh, the queen mother uh, has uh, may nominate nominate someone, and you know the chief could be the queen mother's son uh, or. Um, so the Queen Mother is also within African uh, Akan society play a very big role. Um, so every village or town or city will have a, a chief and then they will have a Queen Mother. Um, right. Now the, um, the, the Queen Mother also may play other roles. Uh, for example, when there is a conflict, um, the, the queen mother may have the final say in, you know, in resolving the conflict or uh, they may, uh, you may not see her in public all the time, but when there is a deadlock in, in conflict, they may uh, seek her opinion to, uh, to pass judgment. Uh, there is um, what we call, in addition to a queen mother in every village or every city or town, we have what we call the, um, in Kwa Kwa Hene, uh, it's like a, the chief of the commoners, commoners. Uh, so every community or village town will select, you know, they have those that are by lineage or by association, the chief, the queen mother by association with the maternal lineage. But then they will have this commoners chief, someone who they select uh, within uh, the commoners who, uh, it's like the spokesperson for the uh, the uh, the people who are not part of the royal family, and so um, the the chief of the commoners can you know bring up grievances uh, to the uh, to the chief, uh, but in the in the in the Akan context, of, uh, chieftaincy, uh, uh, the chief. The chief can be removed from office uh, for if the people, um, you know, if the chief does something, the people do not approve. Although the chief is 
it's by your maternal lineage, uh, you can be removed uh, for, you know, for uh, different things, right? Um, and to the, the chief's, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the chief's foot doesn't touch the ground, it, all right? So, you know, to remove a chief, you just have to take out the sandals. Uh, you know, it takes something like removing the sandals, uh, <laughs> takes out the chief. Uh, so although they have these hierarchical structures, uh, there's always um, other avenues that to, uh, to mit mitigate authoritarian uh, uh, rules within these traditional society because the chief does not act alone. The chief acts on the council and then you have the, you know, the queen mother who also uh, there to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, play a part of, of the society, and then we have the chief of the commoners who also uh, has a big say in, in in the village or community. Now the in in the Akan um, society inheritance is it's it's a big part of Akan society and how uh, the within a can society you don't uh, children do not in a traditional sense children do not inherit from their fathers right children inherit from the mother side of the family so you can in inherit from your your uncle your mother's uh, brother right uh, the you not your, your father, uh, when your father dies, the next of kin is your father's nephew uh, from your father's sister's children, right? Um, and so it, it's um, there's always you know it's 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 kind of, it can be very complex uh, uh, when when someone dies, right? So men uh, women do not inherit from men. And men do not inherit from women. Uh, so the uh, when your father dies, the next of kin is your father's sister's uh, son, that's your father's nephew. Uh, and then also your mother dies, it goes to your mother's sister or your mother's, uh, your, your, your sister. So inheritance is a property or uh, goes from, uh, female to female, and then it goes through from uh, 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 male to male. However, that, you know, uh, to, to be the next of kin, you have to be related to the person through the mother's side. Um, so um, in a traditional sense, when I die, my next of kin could be my, my younger, my younger br brother, right? Uh, if I don't have a younger brother, the next person will be my sister's son, uh, will be the next person. Um, and so that's the, because the, I can see that as, that's your true family, is anyone who is connected within your mother's lineage, that's um, you know, your, your, your true family or your, uh, your blood, uh, right? So uh, when it comes to relationships, um, anyone who is related to you through your mother's side, and it could be your long distance cousin, it could be your, your mother's, um, you know, your grandmother's sisters, you know, you, can have, you cannot have a relationship with anyone uh, who is connected somehow with your mother. You know, it could be your mother's, mother, your mother's sisters, you know, uh, that's, that's incest. You know anyone who's really related somehow remotely um, to your mother is your uh, is your blood, right? So uh, my my cousins uh, from my mother's side, I, they are also my uh, my my brothers and sisters, right? Um, even my cousins, uh, my cousins, my cousins, cousins from my mother's side who inherits me uh, because they have that relationship. They, there's, there's that connection between me and them through my, my mother. Um, the, there are um, 
so that's the, the with uh, Akan society inheritance and you know it's all connected through your mother's uh, side. There's also within Akan society there's um, how they name people. <laughs> uh, so the the first names are based on the day that you were born. Um, so uh, if you're born on you are male and you're born on Sunday, this is your first name. Kwesi is your first name. If you're born on Monday, Kwajo is your first name. So, and the same way, if you were female, you were born on a Sunday. This is your name. You were born on Monday. You are Jua. You were born on Thursday. You are Ya. Yeah. So, and then Kofi. Uh, if you're born on Friday, a fia female. If you're born on Friday, uh, on Friday. Um, so this is a name that comes up. You, you, you know, you don't have to do anything. Um, you don't have to do anything. You, you're born on that day, and that's your name. <laughs> uh, and, and so you know, with uh, uh, Westernization or colonization, you know, you find you find people who who have like me who have other Christian names in addition to these uh, traditional names that. Um, the, you know, based on the day that they were born, they are given at birth, uh, right? So, uh, you know, every you know one will have any Akan person should have one of these names. You know, it's a must. So every Akan person has one of these uh, names. Um, Yep, mm -hmm. yep, and yep, if you're born on, uh, yeah, Abina, which is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, my sister was born on Tuesday, so we uh, we call her Ab Abina. I'm born on Thursday, so like my my, my grandmother will call, will call me Yao. Um, so that's, you know, uh, everybody has this name. Mm. What would be if you, there's many people of the same name in the family? Yeah, How would they differentiate? The, there's, there's always that. There is always that. Um, my, I, my, my sister, my brother was born, I was born on Thursday, and my younger brother was also born on Thursday. Uh, my son, which I, who I had uh, when I moved here last year, was also born on Thursday. We are all yeah, right? But when there, there is a, uh, you know, when you say Yao, uh, you, you add the person's last name to it. Uh, so I'm Yao Ado, uh, my, um, uh, my, 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 my brother also is Yao Jima. Uh, one th unique thing about Akans is that they, Akans do not, you know, they don't always name their children they, after their fathers. The children are not always named. They don't always take the father's last name. Um, so you, you can tell the difference, you know, with the, the last name of the person. Um, so um, because, and, and then the children do not always, are not always given their father's last name um, your, your father, you know, may name you after himself or may name in, uh, uh, you after his aunt or, right? My father name, my last name is my, my, from my father's aunt. Uh, <laughs> so you have this, you know, you can tell the difference by the last name uh, because they refer to the first name and then the, oh. the last name. Um, so your middle name is Ru Ruben. So my 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 English, uh, you know, my official name is Ruben, but uh -huh. uh, my my uh, what we call my traditional name uh, first name is Yao. Oh, okay. Uh, which is uh, so everybody who was born in the Akan culture will have that name, and they may. They may use it officially or they may not use it officially, okay. but it will be a name that um, family members may use uh, to call them. 
Um, they may have it in it as part of the official name or formal name that they use in school, or they may not. Um, it depends on how they use it. Uh, some people may use it or some may not use it. Uh, but uh, most people, you know, because of Christianization or Westernization, uh, most people may have an English first name and then in addition to the uh, uh, traditional uh, first name, um, uh, because everybody has that, any Akan person will have uh, that, uh, uh, this traditional first name. Um, you know, so, you know, my sister is Abina, but she's also Lisa, right? She, her, her, you know, her classmates in school knew her as Lisa, but, you know, the community that she grew up knew, uh, knew her as Abina. Uh, so I think that different places, it, it may be used in different places. And, it, you know, so, so the person who, anyone who will call me Yao, uh, it will be someone who knows me very well, someone who uh, is from my family will call me as Yao. My grandmother will never call me Ruben, but my, but my classmates in school will call me Ruben. My, my grandmother will never use Ruben, will call me by Yao. Uh, so, you know, that's the, uh, so it's, it's just, you know, the struggle between uh, westernization and traditional practices, there's all this constant conflict uh, between, um, you know, with um, changing culture, uh, uh, Western, Western uh, practices, and also uh, traditional uh, practices, uh, right? So within, I can, um, society is this, um, the, the dance, uh, which is common in Akan, uh, which is called the Adwa dance. Um, so Adwa dance is a dance that um, it, the uh, Akans do this dance uh, in the, the, the history about it is that it was learned from the antelope. Antelope, it's similar, it looks like a deer. Uh, so uh, the story is that uh, um, a queen mother was sick, and so they went to the forest to get an antelope uh, to sacrifice the antelope for the health of the queen mother. And then they saw this uh, uh, antelope, and then they learned, you know, the, the dance from it. So I, I'm going to try and see if I can uh, uh, share with you this um, dance, uh, which practiced by a cans. Uh, it's a dance that is, you see it, you know, during um, festive occasions, like, you know, uh, uh, when there is a celebration, a festival, or in some cases also, you may see that when there is a, 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 a funeral going on. Uh, so a lot of people don't know this, but yeah. the best way to make money with Amazon is- Oh, sorry, that's not, I'm not trying to show Amazon, I'm trying to, uh, so let me see if um, um, maybe Marcella, you be able to play it for us. Uh, yeah, if you send me the link. Oh, there we mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. This is the checker. I'm just gonna let. Um, run the the commercial and I will play it. Okay, so let me just. Let me just show my screen. Thank you. 
Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Marcella, for sharing. Um, so you will notice that, you know, within a can society, um, and this is very similar to um, other African cultures that the, the written language was not introduced until colonization, right? Or, or you know, it before, was introduced before colonization by, uh, you know, missionaries, uh, right? Uh, and so dance and the use of symbols, uh, ways of communicating, right? So there's, um, you know, the hand movement, the leg movement, all of that, the communicating their emotions and, you know, making these expressions uh, uh, that you, you have to be, uh, um, you have to lend it, it, these dance to understand what you're talking about. Uh, right. So, so it's very similar with how symbols are used uh, within Akan culture. That you know there are symbols, all the symbols that are used to communicate um, to to people. The symbol that uh, the symbols of authority, right? So that uh, when you see a sign uh, on a, on a building. You know who's who, who lives in that building by looking at the sign of the building, right? So um, there are several symbols uh, some that are called uh, we call them Edinkra symbols, and I think Fresno State had these symbols on the the uh, African and African American Studies Department had a link on that and on their website. Uh, so in addition to dance. Um, you know, anyone who is going to Ghana on a study abroad may notice that one of the most common meals that is prepared in Ghana is fufu. Uh, fufu, uh, fufu is made from either plantains or, or, or plantains and cassava. Um, uh, those who may have been to Latin America may understand, may, uh, may have, uh, may know what cassava is. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Marcella, you can please go ahead and play. Yeah. This plantain is it's similar to banana. It's in the bananas family. You can't really tell the difference because these do turn yellow when they're ripe. You cut this open, boil it, and then you're going to pound the food. A plantain. So I guess after about two minutes of pounding, it forms its shape and texture. This is for the second process. So what they do is they boil the yam and they boil the cassava, boil the plantain. Pound it together and then they mix. So you're about to witness me pound some uh, fufu. So. Yeah, so that's how the, the fufu is very common in every household um, in a can cook, uh, uh, a can household. So, you know, um, in a can community, you go, 
every evening you hear these, you know, people pounding, every household is pounding. Uh, that is fufu, you know, with plantains and cassava. Um, it, it's um, similar to maybe other meals in Africa that it takes a lot of uh, time to prepare them. And, you know, like with fufu, uh, by the time you, you, you finish pounding, you're already tired. Uh, <laughs> I used that. Uh, I have not pounded since I came to America. I guess maybe um, I, that would keep me active if I start pounding some fufu. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm open to questions. Um, yeah, I think that the the Akan culture it's there's so many aspects to to it, and then with, with the the culture is you know every culture is dynamic. So the there's you know, a lot of changes that are going on, um, you know, all over, including Africa. And so the culture is changing all the time, uh, but the core aspects of the culture uh, is still there. I mean, they've, uh, over the years, we've been able to maintain our traditional structure, even with, um, uh, 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 with political um, interference, uh, the traditional, uh, structure is still there. Uh, I think I'm going to open up for questions. Uh, um, any questions? Mm. Okay, I, I have a question that I ask most of my speakers. So mm. we have programs in Ghana for students that wants to study abroad. Mm. What recommendations do you have for students or for anyone that wants to visit Ghana prior going to Ghana? Uh, so for uh, for study or for okay for I I prefer the not living in the cities the city um, you know moving if you can go to some of the more rural areas um, I think you learn a lot more from there uh, because in the city like in Accra or Kumasi the, the city. There's so much Western influence, and so, um, and it's also um, it, because of the different cultures within the city. Um, I, I, if you want to learn more of, about how communities live in Ghana, then you have to leave the city and go in the more rural areas. Um, so yes, go anywhere, not a city, because uh, there's so much going in the city areas. Uh, I think you learn a lot from, from the communities, rural communities, how people actually live their lives. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Feel free to open your mic. I know that you mentioned that you were fairly new to Fresno. Where were you before and how did you adapt into Fresno area? So, I I got my uh, bachelor's degree in Colorado, uh, Colorado State. I've lived in Colorado, Ohio, Maine, and then now I'm in California. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've moved around. I think this is the 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 most. Uh, I think this the weather in Fresno is closer to what we have in Ghana. Uh, you know, it's much drier here. Ghana is more humid. Um, so. But I like the weather here in, in Fresno because there's no snow. Uh, because I've been in the snow for too long. I was in Colorado for, you know, for what, uh, I don't know, like, I think maybe eight or 10 years in Colorado. I was living in Ohio also. I uh, went to grad school in Ohio. So, and then my last place was Maine, uh, which is colder. So this is the most warmest place that I've been, which is much more like where I come from. So, yeah. Well, that's nice. So you're adapting good. So yeah. that means you're staying a little bit longer in Fresno area. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 I know the at the beginning I mentioned your article that about inter international. Um, cultures in classrooms. So do you want to share anything about the article and why people should read it? Well, well, it's it's an article that we, there was a course that I was teaching. There was an international social work course. And so um, uh, 
a couple of friends, uh, we decided to study, uh, you know, look at the, 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 the teaching strategies that we use in the classroom. We, we wanted to evaluate students' learning on that. So it was an international social work course that what I did was to invite uh, guest speakers who were, were from cultures that were different from the students. And then also to also use case study um, because oftentimes, you know, we teach in sometimes, yeah, like bring case studies to the classroom. So um, introduce real life scenarios that were happening in, in, you know, in different cultures and, you know, ask students to discuss uh, and, and also to, um, to, to provoke students to think beyond what is presented in, in the media. Um, you know, for example, uh, there, you know, there's a lot of talk about um, uh, 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 like um, uh, child slavery. Uh, it's been in the media. Uh, there's a lot of talk about that. But what do the people, the local people, what is the understanding of the issue? Uh, how do they perceive it? Uh, and I think that understanding the perspective of the people who are impacted by the problem uh, will help to address the problem. So what do, how do the people see it, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, the, 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 the class was, you know, inter introducing an alternative perspective using case studies and also using guest speakers who are from other uh, cultures that are non-Western cultures to, to, to introduce a Western, a, 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 an alternative narrative to, to the issues. Uh, because how issues are framed you know, uh, in the media uh, is different from how other people uh, see the same issue, uh, right? So. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, and I think that's um, in many topics is very true about what the media portrays and what the actual culture and issue is to be able to understand it and help it. But thank you for sharing. Any questions or comments for Professor Otto? Uh, what you miss the most about the Ghana right now and that you don't see it in the United States. Well, thank you, thank you. I think for me is food. Um, I think for me it's food because, you know, the if you go to anywhere in the world, the the you can have like um, uh, you can have meat in beef in in America. If you go in an, a different country, the beef will taste different, right? Um, so I think for me is the food because you know we can go to the. Uh, some of the uh, ethnic stalls and get the same, you know, you can get corn uh, from uh, uh, some of the stalls here, but it still doesn't taste the same uh, from corn from another country. So I think to me is oftentimes the food because with the people with uh, technology, we are able to communicate with them all the time, right? With, you know, have video calls and all that. But I think the food is always, uh, I always want to go back in, in the summer to, uh, and, and, you know, have some uh, traditional food that I, uh, I may get it here. I can, I may be able to make it here, but it doesn't taste uh, the same. See, have you find any restaurants that assimilate a little bit to you oh. here in the area or in Fresno? I think I, I think I eat more Mexican food. <laughs> so you're acculturating. <laughs> yeah, I think I, yeah. It's hard not to eat Mexican food yeah, in, I, in Fresno. Yeah, I think I more eat a lot of uh, uh, Mexican food, like pasole or, you know. Oh, uh, very fancy. Than, <laughs> than my own, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's yeah. that, so that's great that's basically diversity week celebrating about learning how to uh, acquire the taste for different foods right yeah but it, and also uh, perhaps because uh, 
some Mexican food is similar uh, to some of the food that we have uh, back home in Ghana, you know, because there's beans, there's rice, there is, you know, uh, the spiciness. Uh, and so perhaps that's the, um, uh, maybe the reason. Um, uh, yeah, I think, yes, uh, Mexican and maybe other uh, Latin American uh, countries also, uh, they may have some foods that are very similar to uh, what we have in, like the plantains are common in Latin America. Um, yeah, so I think maybe that's why. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Otto, for making time to present in International Coffee Hour today. Uh, I'm, I know I learned a lot about the agriculture, so thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, so we have a tradition here at Coffee Hour to take a group picture. So I will allow those cameras to open for those that wants to take okay. a part of the picture. And don't move. I'm going to be taking a couple shots. So let me... Okay, a few more seconds. All right, so keep the big smile. Okay, one more. All right, so thank you. I really appreciate your presentation today. Thank you everyone for attending. Um, don't forget next week is our last coffee hour of the semester. We have a great presentation with um, Professor Candy uh, about Colombia. So don't miss that presentation. Um, it's gonna be a great presentation as well next week. So um, have a good um, dinner and don't forget students, if you wanna talk to other students about study abroad, have dinner and come back to Zoom. Um, we're gonna be having a student panel, okay? Bye, have a good Marcella. evening. Yes. Can I talk to you in a minute? If yes, you minute? please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, you could stay. Um, mm -hmm. So, so 